Well, hello again, xenographers, and welcome to another episode of Xenography. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how to operate and how to use the Zorki 4 and 4K line of rangefinder cameras. So if you have one of these cameras lying around and you're not sure how to use it, or if you think you might want to get into rangefinder film photography, or if you're interested in learning all manual photography, stay tuned. So here is the Zorki 4, the Leica-derived Russian rangefinder that was in production in one form or another up until the late 1980s or thereabouts. This camera has no electronics, it's an entirely manual camera. There's no autofocus, there's no auto exposure, there is no auto anything. All of the decisions about exposure and focusing are done by the photographer. Using a camera like this is, in my opinion, the best way to learn photography. Why? Because you have to understand light, you have to understand depth of field, you have to understand how to set the correct shutter speed, how to set the correct aperture. The camera does nothing for you. It is entirely under your control. If you learn photography with an all-manual camera, you are then ideally placed to use any other camera, be it a modern DSLR, or a film SLR, or a large format camera, or a medium format camera. Even if you use the auto settings, you will understand exactly what the camera is doing. You will understand exactly what you need to do in order to control the image and to get the kind of image that you want. Here is the Zorki 4K. And it's identical to the Zorki 4 in every respect, except it has a lever wind where the 4 has a knob wind. And that's the only difference between them. The Zorki 4 and the 4K are rangefinder cameras. That means that when you're taking your shot, the light reaching your eye is not passing through the lens as it does in an SLR. Instead, when you look through the viewfinder, you get a view through this window here. The small window in the centre of the camera here is the rangefinder window and we'll come to that shortly when we look at how to use the rangefinder to focus. So first of all let's have a look at how to load film into this camera. So the first thing to do when loading film into your Zorki 4 or 4K is to undo the clips on the bottom of the camera and give them half a turn each and the back is now free to slide off revealing the inside of the camera this is where your film canister is going to sit the film is going to pass across here and it's going to thread into one of the threaded grooves in the take up reel here so we take our film and you can see that the film has a leader, so the cutout of the leader goes towards the top of the camera. And then we place the film canister into the camera. There is a groove that it lines up with. And across this side we slip the tongue of the film leader into the take-up reel. Make sure that the perforations in the film match the uh, teeth on this spool here. So what we're going to do now is holding it flat, making sure not to put any pressure against the shutter which is very delicate. We simply wind on and make sure the whole thing is taut and we can then replace the back and turn the locking keys finally we complete the winding of the camera and fire one shot to make sure that we've got the 
unexposed portion of the film ready to take our first shot. So now we're loaded. You'll notice that there is a film counter on the top of the camera here. So we will need to set that to zero. You can see a little milled ring in the center there. So the idea is that we just turn that until the zero lines up with the little arrow on top of the uh, bezel here. So we're loaded with film, we've got our film counter set to zero and we're ready to go. So before we shoot we need to consider our focusing and we need to consider our exposure. Focusing obviously you want to get right, you want a nice sharp shot. Exposure you want to get right, you don't want your image too bright so that it's all washed out and useless and you don't want it too dark either. We need to get the optimum amount of light onto that film that will give us the correct exposure. To do that we need some way to measure the light. The Zorki 4 and 4K don't have a built-in exposure meter so we're going to need to use a separate one. You can use the Sony 16 rule as well of course but it can be a bit hit and miss and it's probably best left until you've got a little experience under your belt. So my advice is use a handheld light meter a selenium one is fine or if you've got a more modern one use that or even one on your phone. Here's the light meter I use it's an iPhone app but they're also available on Android so you can see it's got three windows at the bottom here one is for the ISO or ASA that's the speed of your film the sensitivity of your film to light and you change that here and it goes all the way up. I think this one goes to about 3000 ISO but the film we're using today is 200 so we'll dial in 200 ISO. We then set our aperture so let's say that we want to shoot at f5.6 for the sake of argument so we just move the dial until we get to f5.6 and in the fairly limited light in this room you can see that we've got a shutter speed duration of 1 13th of a second. So those are the correct exposure values for the light that we currently have. Now of course there's no 1 13th of a second setting on the Zorki models or indeed any camera that I know of but the closest one will do so the nearest one here would be 1 15th. So our shutter speed dial is here on the top of the camera and our aperture setting is on the Jupiter 8 lens fitted here right on the front of the lens it's a ring that you turn to set your aperture. So let's set the aperture to f5.6. One thing you absolutely must remember when using these Russian cameras certainly the Leica derived ones is that you must never ever set your shutter speed before you've wound on the film. You must always wind on the film first. If you don't wind on first you'll probably break your camera. So get into the habit of winding and then setting your shutter speed. Extremely important. So we wind on our film. This also cocks the shutter and makes sure that all the springs and gears and levers are in the correct place to adjust the shutter speed. So to change the shutter speed we lift this control against spring pressure and we drop it down onto 1 15th. Here's the line that indicates the speed here and there's 1 15th if you can see it there. You will notice the speeds 1 30th here and 1 second here. This dial must never be turned between 1 30th and 1 second. You'll meet mechanical resistance if you try to turn past either of those positions and if you force it you will break your camera. So never turn the dial between 30 and 1. 
Now remember that our shutter speed indicated on the light meter was one thirteenth of a second, so we're on one fifteenth, and to compensate for that, you may want to let in just that fraction more light by turning the dial slightly past 5.6. And that's the light measured and ready to shoot. Remember also that when selecting your aperture, larger apertures, which are given by smaller numbers, so on this camera, the largest aperture is here, f2. Remember that larger apertures give a more blurry background, less depth of field, and smaller apertures, which are given by the higher numbers on this lens, it's 22, means that the aperture is very small, and that will give you a very large depth of field, so much more will be in focus in your shot. F5.6, or just past it, is a kind of a happy medium. Before we shoot, we have to focus. Remember that this is a rangefinder camera, so the focusing mechanism will appear through the viewfinder, and what you will see when you look through the viewfinder is a double image. So you can see that when I turn the focusing lever, there's a double image moving sideways from left to right and right to left. And the way you know you're focused is when those double images come together. So there we're out of focus and there we are in focus. Now one thing I should mention is that there is a diopter adjustment on this camera which essentially focuses the viewfinder to your eyesight. So that's this little lever here next to the rewind control. And we simply move that back and forth while you're looking through the viewfinder to focus for your particular eyesight. So our shutter speed is now set, our aperture is now set, which means that the right amount of light is coming into the camera. Our focus is set by aligning those two double images. All we do next is push the shutter button and take your shot. After you've taken your shot, don't be tempted to wind on again. Because these cameras have springs in them that essentially operate the shutter speeds, they can lose their tension if you leave your camera in the wound on position. So don't wind on until you're ready to take your next shot. There is a self timer mechanism on these cameras and that's controlled by this little lever here. So if you want to take a self portrait or if you're with a group of people and you want to appear in a photograph with that group, you can. So the procedure is wind on. Always remember wind on first before doing anything. Set your focus and your exposure and then turn this lever against, against spring pressure all the way to the bottom. Then if you push this little switch here, this will give you about 15 seconds of delay. And there we are, selfies from the mechanical era. Now sooner or later the point's going to come where you've run out of film, you've shot all the shots on the roll and you need to rewind your film cartridge so that all the film goes back into the canister so you can take it off for developing. Well the way you do this on the Zorki is by means of this collar which is around the shutter release here and what you do is you push down on the collar and turn it and you will notice that the whole assembly with the shutter button moves downwards. 
Now with the collar in the down position, what that means is the drive for the film is disengaged, so you can now rewind the film back into the canister. And to do that, we lift this control and turn in the direction of the arrow, which is clockwise. And we just keep on turning until we feel a little resistance. And that means that almost all of it is back into the canister. So once you feel that point of resistance, turn the rewind control just a little further. And I always like to leave a small amount of film protruding from the canister. Um, if I'm doing my own developing with black and white, for example, that means it's much easier to get the film into the developing tank or into the daylight tank that I use. Not turning too far past the point of resistance will mean that your film is still out of the canister. There are tools you can get to fish it out again if you go too far and the whole lot goes back in, but to be honest I found those rather difficult to use and somewhat hit and miss. So we can now go ahead and remove our roll of film. That can go off to the lab and be processed. Of course we will need to turn the collar anti-clockwise to make sure that the drive is engaged again for our next roll of film. There are three dots here. There's one dot on the shutter release, another dot on the collar and another dot on the body of the camera here. Those all need to be lined up for proper operation. So once we've done that, we'll wind once and a little more and we're now ready to shoot again. So there we are, the basic operating principles of the Zorki 4 and 4K. I do encourage you to pick one up. If you want to learn photography, they are a great way to learn. These are only the basic principles, of course. You'll find that if you do decide to pick one up and use one and keep using it, then your experience will grow, your knowledge will grow, and you'll begin to use it as a tool and the actual principles of operation will become second nature. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do tune in again next time for more Xenography. Thank you for watching.